Welcome to Unreal Gems. In this video, we are going to shade Citrine's skirt. In order to do that, we are going to use several advanced techniques, like for example, Fresnel, cloth shading in Unreal Engine, and Refraction. Well, so we are in Unreal. As I mentioned in the intro, we are going to shade Citrine's skirt. So as you can see, it is transparent, more or less. We have also different refractivity depending on the curves of the cloth. As you can see, it also has color highlights also depending on the curves and we can take a look at how to shade that in Unreal Engine. So in the material, you are going to see that it is quite more complex, but we are going to go through step by step and explain everything. So don't worry about it. First things first, we have the base color and the emissive. As you can see, the base color is connected to the base color pin, which has a LERP, which is going to interpolate between two colors. We're going to use Fresnel to interpolate between those two in the borders where the viewing angles are extreme. So as you can see, it tints the extreme viewing angles with pink and the other color is going to be when we see the object head on. That's what Fresnel does and we have parameters to be able to ad adjust the effect. We can preview the node so you can see it better. As you can see, it is uh, white in the stream angles and black where it, we see head on. So there is no other trick to it. You can see it clearly and you can use it to interpolate between the two colors with the LERP node, which consumes that uh, color and interpolates between A or B. So with that, we are going to reuse the color for the base color and also the emissive. As you can see, the output of the LERP is connected to the base color and the output of the LERP also goes to a multiply, which controls the emissive intensity because we don't want the skirt to glow too much, but we do want that uh, extra glow that is going to make it apparent in any lighting condition. So we are connecting that output of the multiply to the emissive color, and we can control it with the emissive parameter. So as you can see, that is quite simple. It's not complex at all. Looks complex, but the reasoning is quite simple behind the parts of the material that I have just talked about. With that, we are going to see how this affects with the material instance the skirt. So let's go ahead and make it bigger so we can see better the parameters. And now we are going to change them in real time so you can see it. So as you can see in the material instance, we have a base color which is kind of bluish and the edge color is going to be whitish, but uh, you can tint it with whatever color you want. Don't go too far because it's going to make it too, too apparent, but if you are subtle, you can get a really nice effect, which I used pink, so you can see the pink in the highlights and it's not too overwhelming, so it looks really good. As you can see, we can adjust the Fresnel parameter. We can make it a lot more bright or less bright, depending on if we go to positive numbers or negative numbers. As you can see here, the negative numbers give it a outerworldly look that I quite like. With the emissive, we can make it pop more. If you go too far, as you can see, it will make it almost opaque, so it doesn't look good. But with this, you can make it more visible even when it is in the shadow or whatever. It also gives it a dreamy look, which I like, so let's keep it more or less where it was. Again, uh, just be subtle, don't be too, too aggressive because it will not look good. I'm going to turn it back up again so you can see Fresnel with the emissive in a different place, how it reacts. As you can see, the effects change quite heavily depending on one another. 
So you need to play with that and see how it looks. As you can see, I quite like the effect that I had before, so I went back and you can see that it is uh, quite nice but subtle. I didn't want it to take away too much focus from the character, so I went with this uh, kind of look, transparent like curtains, but not too apparent and keeping focus in the character, which is what I wanted. So this more or less was what I was looking for. And now we can go ahead and take a look at some other parts of the material that we already have seen, but let's go ahead and explain them in detail. Like for example, the metallic and roughness parameters and also the specular, all connected to their corresponding pins. And as you can see, we are going to see how they look depending on their value. We could go up in the roughness value because right now it is quite uh, polished. We can go up to a rougher surface, more like a uh, cloth. As you can see, the result improves quite a bit, but I think taking it to one is too much. So we are going to dial it down. We could also see how the specular looks in this type of uh, character. This type of shading is not going to be really apparent in YouTube and also with a high, higher roughness it will be also less apparent so probably we should dial it down a little bit and I'm going to keep it at the default of 0 0.5. Again if we go down to a roughness of 0 that's going to make like uh, the surface really polished so let's go back up to 0 0.38 because I think it looks way better. If we go up to metallic and we turn it up we are going to have like more of a shower curtain look as you can see which is not what we are looking for we are not looking for that plasticky transparent look which the metallic brings us so we are going to again fiddle with the roughness that, so that you can see how it looks but I'm not loving the metallic which makes no sense because this is a cloth material so let's dial it down to zero and forget about it and keep the roughness at 0.3 which I think looks great. Let's go back to the material now and let's dive deep into the other parts that we have left. So another one is the opacity map. So as this is a translucent material we are going to need an opacity map which is going to be sampled without this RGB and with the compression settings as default. In this map we have zero where it is transparent and white where it is opaque. Gray values are going to be in between. So gray values going to zero are going to be more transparent and gray values going to white going to one are going to be more opaque. So here we are looking for the edges of the skirt to be kind of transparent. We also have the power and saturate, which is going to intensify with the power the opacity map or make it less apparent depending on where we go with the exponent. And then we have the saturate, which is just going to clamp the values between 0 and 1. So as you will see later, this is quite straightforward and easy to use and you are going to see how it affects. As I mentioned before, we need to clamp those values so they don't go over 1 or below 0 because that can cause problems. Then we just connect it to the opacity pin and that's pretty much it. I'm going to cover the normals now because I have explained it a thousand times. So remember to add detail we have a normal map. Let's just keep it as is and let's go ahead and see how the opacity parameter works. With 1 it's going to stay the same as we will see here. And... If we go over one, it's going to be more transparent, but it is going to keep the opaque parts opaque. That's because when we elevate a number to a power, so a number over one, it's going to make it smaller because it multiplies itself by itself, so it makes it smaller. If on the other hand, you go below one in the power, is going to make it bigger because remember that it will be a root instead of a multiplication. So that's why when we go to a number below one, it makes the map 
more opaque while respecting again all of the highs and lows of the map. If we just multiplied instead of using a power, everything would go down or up evenly, which is not what we want because we want to keep the wrinkles and the curves in the material. So that's why we use a power. So as you can see, logic is quite simple, but you need to understand the math behind it. Again, uh, we are going to see the next part of the material, which uh, is going to be quite cool. Let's forget now about cloth. Let's go ahead and first talk about refraction because it's quite simple. We are going to use Fresnel to identify those borders in the camera angles and then we are going to lerp between a refraction of one and the parameter, which is going to activate or deactivate the refraction depending on Fresnel. So what we want here is that extreme angles are more refractive than angles head-on from the camera view. So as you can see, I have gone quite subtle with it because if you go up, it can make an a strange uh, look. It could be what you want. Uh, if you are, for example, using metallic and the more of a curtain, shower curtain look, but here I didn't like it so high. So I went really subtle and I just used like the, the one that you see. As you can see, when you go up in the metallic, it looks kind of more in place, but I prefer the look with the 1.01. You could go 1.0 and not have any refraction at all, but I did like that some of the background gets refracted quite sadly. Uh, it gives it a more like ethereal look that I did like here with this character. So as you can see, the refraction part is quite simple. It's going to make the wrinkles more refractive. And if you want the same look as me, you're going to have to change the lighting mode to surface translucency volume in the material options. But let's go ahead and take a look at the new shading model that we have not seen before. So the cloth shading model. We are trying to imitate an effect that happens in real life, which uh, makes it so that cloth surfaces have kind of a fuzz on top of them, like for example, knitted wool, that it's going to make it look like it has rim lighting. So on the extreme angles, it's going to have more light, so a lighter color, as you can see in the image. In contrast, in the perpendicular parts, it's going to be darker. But remember that silk or satin is the opposite way, so lighter head-on, and in extreme angles, darker. So once we have this out of the way, we can take a look at the cloth shading model in Unreal Engine. So we need to choose our material, and in the blend mode, we have um, chosen translucent because we want it to be transparent. Remember to choose the surface translucency volume option. And then we can go ahead and choose our shading model, which remember that the default one is default lead. Here we are looking for cloth, which is going to be what we want. Again, activate two-sided because if not, the cloth is going to be back faced cold. So it will be transparent at some point and it will disappear. So just remember to use the two-sided parameter because if not, it will look wrong. Again, we have the first color pin and the cloth pin. Cloth is going to control uh, when that color is blended onto the base color. So remember the lighter color due to the fuzz on top of the cloth surface. So we are going to try to imitate that effect that we saw before. And for that, we need to use the fast color. Here, I have a really simple setup. If we want it to be more physically correct, we would have to make it more complex. And with this stylized character, I didn't think it necessary. So we could use for that the opacity map, for example, to only blend the first color on the sides of the, on the wrinkles of the skirt. We can see how it looks real quick, adding a multiply and multiplying by the fast color and then connecting that to the fast color pin in the material. As you can see here, it's not going to 
at the fast color so evenly so it makes the wrinkles and the details of the surface way more apparent. We could also use Fresnel or the base color map to create a similar effect but to keep things simple let's go back to the way it was with the fast color connected to the fast color pin directly. With this we'll get a similar tint and we don't have to make the material more complicated than it needs to be. So right now I'm adding a parameter as you can see with the color so I can change it in the material instance. So let's go ahead and see how it looks in action and let's see when we change the fast color and the cloth parameter what happens. So let's make the window bigger so you can see better what happens with the cloth parameter because it is going to be more apparent here than in the scene. If we turn it down to zero it's going to make the color not blend and at one it's going to blend the fast color. Let's make it pink so we can see it better. Again cloth is going to be zero, it's not going to be blended and as we go up it's going to start being blended. As you can see the highlights start to appear of that color and the surface appears to be kind of tinted, kind of blended with the fast color. I think it looks uh, really good in blue so let's go ahead and see it in action in the scene so you can see better the effect that it has. As you can see when we turn down the cloth parameter it's making it less apparent and when we go up it's going to start appearing again the fast color. So you can see that this is a subtle change but I think it looks really good and it is worth it. Let's now change colors and turn the cloth parameter up to one so you can see it better and here if we start changing the colors you can see that it has that small accent that small extra blend of color that in my opinion looks really well. We will add another video to our PBR shading series in which I will explain all of the cloth details of the Unreal Engine shading model and we will learn how to make silk and other types of cloth and you will understand everything in depth. Okay so here we have our material, we are done with it. Remember that we have the base color with the edge highlights using Fresnel and the emissive. Next we have the metallic and roughness parameters, the opacity map with opacity intensity, normals, cloth parameters with fast color and the cloth pin to control it and the refraction parameters which we will use with Fresnel to control the refraction and only refract on the edges. Well, this video has been a little longer and a little more complex than the other ones. But I think we have learned a lot of techniques that are going to be useful in shading your own characters. If you have found the video helpful, go ahead, like and subscribe, and we'll see each other in the next videos of the PBR Stylized Shading series.